This program is brought to you by the Reeves Law Firm, www.reevesfirm.com. In, 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 in the know. Good evening, everyone. In the know. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Fire. Following the news in any way, shape, or form. No shortage of things to talk about. What does it mean? What will it bring? Is this a reality we simply have to accept? Go ahead and get started. You would be so surprised by the number of times people find themselves being frustrated because of the fact that they know that they're getting Social Security benefits and they're worried that some type of money that they're getting may have some impact on their disability benefits. So I want to take some time today to really talk about this. I know I've talked about this in previous videos, but I'd like to take the opportunity to just give you some tips about what happens when you're receiving disability benefits and you find yourself in the position of receiving monies from other sources and you're trying to figure out the best way to deal with it in terms of how it may impact your Social Security benefits. Let's talk a little bit about the two most commonly referred to programs under Social Security for disability purposes. The first one is what we call Supplemental Security Income or SSI. This is a need-based program. Just think of it like a welfare program. It's asset and resource sensitive, which means Social Security is going to be pay a very close attention to whether you're getting money or assets from any other source. There's typically a cap on how much money you can receive from SSI. So if you're getting money from other places, they may reduce that money going downward. Disability insurance benefits is a little bit different. That's the money that is taken out of your check, uh, typically whenever you're, you're paying into it, whether it be on a monthly basis or bi-weekly, whatever the case may be. That's what you've paid into Social Security. This program is normally not asset or resource sensitive, meaning they're not going to pay close attention to whether you're getting, you know, um, you know, a couple dollars from friends or things like that. Um, they're not going to care if you have extra houses or anything like that. For this one, this is basically, this is the money you paid into the system, and you have a higher opportunity to get greater benefits. I point to these two programs because for purposes of applying for disability, these are the two that come up the most frequent. So let's start with supplemental security income. Let me just be blunt when I tell you this. The more money you get from other sources, the less you get from SSI. I can tell you that it's not uncommon for me to have people who freak out because they know if they're getting SSI and then they find themselves in a situation when they get a windfall of money, whether it be um, the lottery, a settlement, inheritance, whatever, they're worried about what impact that's going to have on their SSI. And to be honest, you should be concerned because if you find yourself getting a lump sum of two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, Social Security is going to be interested in the fact that you receive this windfall. Remember, Supplemental Security Income is a need-based program. Now, and listen when I hear this, because some people are going to sit here and say to yourself, well, I need this money for me. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not the, what they mean by need. They look at it as this. It is designed, that's the very key of the first word, to supplement in other words, they, it's meant to add to whatever you're getting. So if you get something, then it's less, you don't need to supplement, get supplemental income from them. So think of it like this. If you need $10 a month, but one of your friends is giving you $9, well, guess what? They're going to determine you don't need nine of the $10 they give you because your friend is giving you $9. So instead of getting $10, you get what? A dollar. I know you're like, that's crazy. I need the 10 for my nine for my friend and the 10 for social security under the supplemental security income program does not go down like that. Now, deeming is something that I talk about where you'll find the regulations is a little confusing, but this is where I want you to, to, to see if I can put it into most simple terms possible. Deeming is a nice way of saying that you are receiving a benefit as a result of someone someone's financial status because and it's it's kind of weird to put it like this but let me see if i can break it down a little cleaner 
if you're living with someone, okay, you're not paying and you're not paying rent because why? They're not charging you because guess what? They're paying for the household. So imagine a situation like this. You're living with a friend of yours who has an apartment they're renting. They're not charging you rent. They're paying the rent. So guess what? You're deemed that benefit because it's deemed that you are not having to pay rent because why? They're paying for it. Same thing with food. If they're paying for all the food in the house and you don't have to pay for anything, that's a benefit you receive. The reality is that they treat it as if, again, even in circumstances where, as silly as it may seem, you're like, but they're letting me just sleep on the couch. That makes no sense. That's still a benefit that you are receiving that you didn't normally have, that you would normally not, you would normally have to pay. Okay. Now, here's the thing that I always stress to people. This is where people tend to get themselves in trouble. A lot of times what happens is that people get windfalls and then all of a sudden Social Security finds out about it and their benefits get suspended and they freak. Keep in mind, when you're getting supplemental security income, you have an ongoing duty to let them know if you have a resource that's coming into you. If they find out after the fact, they're either going to, one, suspend your benefits until they can determine whether you spent that money down. And two, you risk the possibility that if it was for a month when they should not have paid you because you got that windfall, they're going to hit you with an overpayment. So you want to be proactive as opposed to reactive. Keep documentation of all the assets and resources that you can to the best of your ability. This way you can show them what you got. And more importantly, you can show them when you've spent it down. Under this program, it operates a little bit differently. And what I mean by a little bit differently, I mean that under the Disability Insurance Benefits Program, under that program, you don't have to worry about the assets and resources as much, but you do have to worry about your benefits being offset or reduced. And most people are like, well, what does that mean? That means that the regulations specifically identifies certain programs that will have a direct impact on your benefits. Like for instance, workers' compensation. If you have a workers' compensation case and you find yourself getting workers' comp benefits and you're also getting SSD benefits, those two programs have offset provisions. So that depending on how much money you're getting from your workers' comp, how old you are, and how much, and even if it's a lump sum, they have to calculate whether or not they need to reduce your social security because of the workers' comp. Some pensions fall under that, especially government pensions. Certain VA benefits, usually non-service connected benefits, fall under that. All of these things are things that Social Security is going to want to know about because they're going to need to adjust your disability benefits as a result of that. So I want to take the opportunity to see if I can share a few tips for how to you know, protect your disability benefits when you expect money from other sources. First things first, if you know that you've got some money coming, contact Social Security in advance for, for guidance. So many times people are, I hate to say it, paranoid because they're worried that by letting Social Security know something, either one of two things is going to happen. They're going to put their case under review or they're going to take away their benefits. First of all, your case is always under review because you have an ongoing duty to, pr to prove that you're disabled. So get that out of your mind. The reality is, is that if you know the money's coming in, it's to your advantage to know what the consequences are ahead of time so you don't freak out after the fact. If you know there's money coming in and it's tied to your social security number, the government's going to find out. I need you to recognize this. You ain't being slick by keeping that information to yourself and telling social security after the fact. The problem that you're going to run across is that if they have to come back after the fact, you may not like the outcome. For instance, if you are getting some money for SSI for a particular month, guess what? They're going to go back and they're going to apply that money to whatever month you got it, and they potentially will keep applying it until you can show them when you spent that money down. So now you got a nightmare situation where if you just told them in advance, they could tell you what your options are. For SSI, you may want to consider a special needs trust. A special needs trust is a very special device that is created that allows you to put lump sums of money into that does not affect your SSI. Now, I will tell you, I will tell you, 
you may want to contact an, an elder lawyer or somebody who does estate planning in terms of setting these up because these have, have to be set up a very, very particular way. And more importantly, you need them to explain to you the consequences because by placing money into a trust, you're really allowing a trustee to handle this money. It takes control of this money away from you, which is one of the biggest things that people get. Oh, I'll go get me one of those. It's important to understand, and, every, and it's a, and most, like I said, talk to an elder lawyer or somebody who does these on a regular basis, but by putting it into a trust, money into a trust, you're taking the money out of your control, okay? Also, for DIB, find out if your disability benefits will be affected by the money. So, for instance, let's say that you're applying for, dis that you're getting disability benefits, but you now decide to apply for retirement, on a medical retirement when you used to work for the county well you want to find out and you want to know is that money from that county if it's a retirement pension or something like that is that going to affect your your money for social security so let social security tell you for ssi if you find yourself that you're going to get a large lump sum of money and i know some of you are like well what's a large lump sum let's just say this if you know you're going to get any amounts of money in some just just don't give a magical number because a lot of times what happens is people are like, what's the number? And then they hold on to that number and then something comes to them and then something weird happens and they freak out. If you know you're going to get some money, okay, a windfall, whether it be an inheritance, whether it be a settlement, whether it be the lottery, keep documents of the receipt of that money and then where you spent it to show that you spent it down. And more importantly, tell Social Security. If your benefits are suspended, find out what you need to do in order to reinstate your benefits. That's extremely important. You want to know, okay, if this is what happened to cause my benefits to turn off, I need to know what I need to do in order, in order to turn them back on. And then lastly, be careful about overpayments. I cannot stress again, if you don't tell Social Security about certain instances of money that you're receiving you put yourself in the position where the government will have to cho will have to then go back and get that money from you so i don't want you to be in a situation where all of a sudden your money is starting to be reduced because you created a situation that created an overpayment for yourself the reality is at the end of the day your biggest asset and resource really is the social security administration i know it's easy to be concerned I know it's easy to be concerned about the possibility that by them, by telling them about this, that you may be putting your disability benefits in jeopardy, but you may be creating a bigger thunderstorm for yourself if you keep that information to yourself and they find out after the fact. Be proactive, not reactive.